Welcome to today's Coachella video. Good, man. Uh, getting used to the new heat. Yeah. The heat wave summer's here. You know, it's crazy is that sometimes we always tell people, like, you were talking to the man, the myth, the legend. But honestly, <laughs> when it comes to you, you really are the man, the myth, the legend. Like, it's crazy. The, the Coachella, man. Is that why here, right? I guess so. I mean, <laughs> just uh, just the, the man. A man. A man. Yes. No, but yeah, it's... Uh, it's weird, but yeah, we just branded ourselves to to the Coachella content. Mm -hmm. Some people know me at Coachella, Coachella Angel, this and that. So, so what is it, man? Is it is the really the is it the mustache? Is it the beer that that gets that opportunity? Because I'm struggling right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I got rid of this. Hopefully, it could grow more down here, but it ain't working. You know, <laughs> no. You gotta try it, uh, beard oil, and then go to church like three times a week, and then pray. <laughs> Whatever you uh, pray to the universe, the gods do you believe in, whatever. I think the problem is is that I don't give too much tithes and offering, so they just take that out of consideration. <laughs> yeah, that you could try those uh hair implants that they do, those little have you seen that like people do it in their head? I've yeah. seen it, yeah. People but, do it in their beard too. Like people do that on their face. Yeah. And then, I don't know how it works, but then they grow hair. So to be uh, to be real with you, I did something like that, but it wasn't like implants, it was more like a freaking marker. So what happened was it's like <laughs> <laughs> you're like tracing yourself with the fucking so, like, so yeah, it was like back in Maryland, I was like, okay, I'm finally get to grow my facial hair. Let me try something different. So I wanted to see like how do people get that pristine cut, you know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes they actually do like a little black spray on you and they they, they comb it through your yeah, beard. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was know. like, okay, cool, let me give it a try. Boy, what I told you I look masculine. Bro, when I tell you, <laughs> yo, my chin looks so chiseled, I was like... <laughs> Denzel washing, I'm ready. Bro, when I tell you, I said, I need headshots right now, bro. Right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> immediately. Now and then, you get that confidence boost from the barbershop. Because, uh, like, every time you go to a barbershop, you just feel like... You, I don't know. I don't know what it does. <laughs> I don't know the psychology behind it, but it just gets you, like, yeah. ready for anything. It's, 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 it's the room for men, you know? That's that's where we grow. That's where we evolve. We're like, that's like that's like that's the Pokemon good. chambers, you know? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you go in there, you get your training, you get your cut. I choose you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> ready, ready to freaking catch them all. Hell, oh, yes, yes. But yeah, bro, um, well, just met you recently. Um, you do videography, uh, directing, all that stuff. And we, were, we saw you recording and then we're like, oh, what the hell? Like, there's somebody else here. So, mm -hmm. uh, when you've been here in the valley since the summer last year, or no. you had, this is your first summer? Yeah, this is gonna be my first summer. So I heard it's gonna be lit, like literally. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets it gets really rough. But uh, since when did you move out here, or, or tell us a little bit about your background? How you guys start with video, and how yeah. the hell you end up in the Coachella Valley out of all places? Boy, let me tell you, man. <laughs> so I'll be. I'll be brief, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, grew up in Orangeburg, South Carolina, small town, uh, military family. So we were traveling around a lot. Uh, so a little bit of Cali, Okinawa, Japan. And then we settled in good old Jacksonville, North Carolina. And when I tell you there ain't nothing to do in that city, oh, oh my God. There was, I had every itch in my body to get out of there, but the people were great, you know? Uh, so did that. And when I went to college at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University in Greensboro, North Carolina. You know? <laughs> that's, that's a mouthful right there. <laughs> yes. Oh, I forgot to say the illustrious. We have, wow. So when I, when I mentioned the schools now, nah, you got to mention illustrious. But anyway, when I was doing there, uh, I was getting my bachelor's of fine arts in acting. And that was the moment when I started to take videography seriously because I was starting to learn both in front and behind the camera techniques. So I'm like, okay, cool. All I could afford was the iPad. So that's all I had. So me and my best friend, we created like some sort of films on an iPad. And to me, I thought that was the best thing ever. <laughs> and, and that was the ugliest thing I've ever made in my entire life. The ugliest thing. Now, but those, those are important because it's how you got started, you know? Like you might not judge it for technically or you know, compared to what you do now, but it's cool to see. Like, no, I remember I made that project. Like, yeah, I got I got videos that are cringe like that. You just it's it's like moments that you remember. At least you have it like a digital footprint or something. Yeah, bro, and, and you're right, and it's still up there too. I'm actually thinking about like if I can reach ten thousand followers on Instagram, I'll do a reaction 
to my first for short film. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and just like share it with everybody. How, uh, how long ago did you do that short film? Uh, I think it was like over 12 years ago. Oh, wow. That's so, going to be dope. Yeah. And it actually, this is uh, my 12 year mark doing video production and acting. So 12 years. That's, I can't do math. Like 2012? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Damn, 2012 was 12 years ago. That's Oh, damn. That sounds kind of crazy, Oh, my actually. God. No. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, that was 12 years ago. Oh, my God. Stop Coney, 2012. Do you, do you ever see that trend? The, 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 the 2012? Coney, 2012. It was like some dictator that they were trying to stop. Oh, yeah. Some Ugandan dictator. And it was like this whole trend mm -hmm. in 2012. And... Um, I don't know what happened, but I think like the the guys behind it, like one of them was like running around naked. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he yeah. was freaking out, bro. Like I was just like, mm. and that was also the year the world was going to end oh, as that, well. Yeah. So I mean, to his perspective, I would be freaking out, but naked as well if the world was going to end. <laughs> and Coney's trying to take over the world too. That movie 2012. Did you ever watch that? Yeah, I did. I think they came out in 2012 that summer or some shit. Like the yeah. perfect marketing. Like, bro, you know, I'm not trying to be too like selfish, but I feel sorry for those who have like passed away. Thinking that it was going to end that year, you know, it's just like you want to you want to redo that, <laughs> you know, like, sorry about that. But yeah, there, there is people. Yeah, there's people that were scared of reaching the year 2000 and yeah. they passed away be before the year 2000 because they're like, oh, I can't white 2 k Yeah. I don't even know. I was too young for that moment. But like, what were people scared of the year 2000? That's kind of done. Yeah, so, exactly. Right. I mean, that's kind of cool, actually, though. Like, it's the turn of the millennia. Like, that's you are like our generation. We got to see go from one to two. You know, so, yeah. Yeah. It hadn't happened well since the. That's, that's like a, a, within a thousand years. Well, yeah, the thousand. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Damn, that's insane. And then there's people that are going to live in the 90s. So you, you were born in the 90s or 80s, but well, most likely in the 90s. You go from the 90s, the 1900s, the 2000s, and then they live to be over 100 and something years, then the 2100s. Oh, my God. Somebody that's like 105 that was born in like 2006 or something. Yeah, 2105. That's Someone's scary. Someone's going to live for three, three different centuries or some shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like, holy cow. These, these centuries are ridiculous, bro. Um, but I really like those aspects of just like experiencing growth, experiencing so much change. And with that change is when I started to realize within my acting career, like, hey, somebody's going to have to shoot my reels. I can't afford to be doing all of this stuff. So I, I told myself, if I wasn't going to get enough jobs as an actor, I better get enough jobs as a video videographer. Like, I want to be in that industry. I didn't want any excuse not to be. And so I started growing from there, using a phone, started using like a Canon. Uh, didn't want to touch Nikon, never. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then finally saved enough money to get my Sony. And it was just like, okay, this is where I need to be. And of course, crazy is that I had the Canon for the longest. It was like a Rebel T5i. Oh. And you could tell I was inexperienced with it because I was looking at Sigma lenses on this camera like, why is it not working? Like, I don't know how to use it. The yeah. glass is not, it, you know, I was, I was blaming the camera and not myself. So now I'm at a point where it's like, oh, your camera does a great job. No, that's me. Like, don't ever <laughs> disrespect me like that. Do you believe it's, so there's, a, I, I believe it's, it's a balance, but you know how people say it's not about the gear. I still think it's about the gear, but also the skill. Like, you can't dismiss a badass camera that can shoot 4K, like, fucking 60 frames slow-mo yeah i think that camera is gonna output even on somebody who doesn't know how to use it, it's gonna come out with something beautiful so then you use that tool to make something badass yeah but you could also take an old camera if you know the skills you can make something good out of that camera yeah so i think it's a balance of both but people always like to dismiss it i don't know no i agree man because to having that that foundation right like i would love to use the old cameras and see how did they utilize that tool to perfect their creation because nowadays we look at all equipment and it's like wow that looks that seems extremely difficult like we now make it so simple you yeah. literally just the point of play at this point to the point now we even have it on our phones now like raw what that's crazy like, that's so disrespectful and it's also like the future it's a little scary not scary but more people are able to 
to have more tools, I guess, just without having to buy a camera because yeah. I already have a version of that on the phone. Yeah, more affordable. No, not that much excuses. You have freaking as many angles as you want, super ultra wide. You could zoom in, infinite zoom. Yeah, dude. Like low lighting. And you could also rig it up too. Like if you really wanted to get it on a gimbal with lighting and a cage. Oh, for yeah. It. Like people really rig up their phone setups. Yeah. So um, the future is, I feel like the future, 5, 10, 10 years plus for phones. Like mm-hmm. are cameras going to be even be needed? If they will, but. I don't know. Well, I see that some of these phones, like Red, I believe, has developed a phone specifically for camera uh, uses. And so I feel like we're already at the cusp of something like that already. But the dedication of it still needs to be tweaked. Oh, so Red has their own phone now? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, oh, like, so know. You know, like how so many companies, they have like phones specifically for gaming. Well, I believe there's phones out there. I think Red has done it, which is now bought out by Nikon. But um, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so we can dismiss those products. Yeah, yeah, we don't have to worry about that. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I believe, believe it or not, I believe Usher's latest music video was all shot on iPhone. I believe so. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Yeah. and it's just like I couldn't tell much of a difference because at the end of the day, you always got to have that powerful light source. Yeah. And that's what's that's the, always the secret ingredient to it at all. It, it took me a while to not necessarily realize that, but to save up, of course, to make my videos pop more. It's like I can have, to your point, you got the ex- most expensive tools in the world, but if you're not like knowing how to utilize it and know what else comes with making a perfect video, then you're wasting your time. I remember seeing a meme that said, newbies thing is the camera like oh i need to get a new camera and then like amateurs is like oh i gotta get these lenses but pros is like it's all about the lighting like you have to yeah the, the lighting for mood for outdoor exposure whatever it is like you got to be able to adjust um and i think lighting people don't that's one of the last things people get into the lighting and the framing of everything yes yes i believe i believe that 100 percent because i was literally just that guy i was like yep don't want to use Canon, I want to get to Sony. All right, cool. But I didn't have any lenses. I still had Canon lenses. What am I doing? Then I studied it and it's like, oh, wow, okay. Got me a converter, used those lenses to my advantage. That helped me out a lot. And then, yeah, like you said, um, now it's lighting. I think even more so now, if you really want to take this to an even next level, not only lighting, but composition and how to tell that story in a still frame. Like for me, I'm trying to teach myself the, at the power of non-moving cinematography, putting it right back to sticks or like on tripods is what they say. And it's like, relax, because we're, we're such in a, we're such program to be constantly moving so much. We need, we need our minds to be tickled like every three seconds, but to have a still frame and provide some composition to tell a story in that still frame to me, that's cinematography. Yeah, that's how it started. It was, you you let the action be the action and let the camera capture the action. You know? Yeah, dude, yeah. And it's just like, to me, I treat myself like a soldier. Like, no, I am the action. Like, you need a, if I'm not capturing it, it doesn't exist. But no, keeping it still is more beneficial. Okay, so uh, let's jump back to, uh, to you. You were in South Carolina. Yeah. And then is that when you started the video or, or what? Or Absolutely what not. The time? No. I had no idea what I wanted to do in South Carolina. So it was in North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, using my iPad, we were just figuring things out. I thought iMovie was the best tool known to man. I was so wrong. Uh, then we started using, like, different products to further advance our capabilities. Uh, but... I started doing uh, like a little YouTube series called the, the Riley News. And yeah, all on my iPad. And it all started with 2012. It literally started with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. So it was like, well, you know, it's 2012 and we're still here, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I just felt like, well, okay, this is something simple I could do. Let me try that again. So I started doing more. I just started taking the trend. And this is before chasing topics on social media was yeah. a thing which I wish I stuck with, man. You know, look at hindsight 2024. 20, but still, like, I even took that through college and I would take my iPad, slap it on the table, and bring different communities, different members, and stuff like that to talk about certain topics. 
and it would blow up, shrink, and then blow up again. So what platforms were you posting on it? Just time? YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't figure out. Instagram was just getting started around that time, so I didn't. It was really just photos YouTube. only. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was just mainly YouTube and Facebook as well. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, I never figured out Facebook. That's just that's <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking about going into MySpace too, but I don't think it, MySpace was working anymore around that time, right? I feel like it's been working this whole time. I think you could still. I think people might still use it now. Yes, yes. I don't even know how it even. I haven't even been on that site forever, but um, I I don't remember the login to my original account. But I have an account that I made like when I was like in middle school. Yeah. So that has nothing with like middle school photos and I don't even. <laughs> But I can't access it because I don't remember the login. But mm -hmm. like, if I look it up, I'll be able to find it. Maybe that'll be a niche. Start a just creating content for MySpace. Mm -hmm. Whoever is consuming that website will be watching your <laughs> shit. And they'll be like, what the yeah, fuck? who is the demographic now? I mean, I feel like it's us because we were going through <laughs> the it. The people you know? that were around millennials and shit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then, um, what was was your next step in your journey for? Am I a production? Okay, so. My next step was uh, joining the military, actually. So, okay, so you said you came from a military family. So I was going to ask you, too, it's like how you go from a military family. You're like, I'm just going to make videos or, yeah, so or like get into acting. Is that uh, What inspired you to get into acting? Uh, so great question. What inspired me to get into acting was in high school. So uh, I was part of the marching band, and music was my first love. Still is to a degree. And I needed something to keep me active. Sports wasn't really much of my thing. And my high school teacher told me, like, hey, just join theater. Let's give it a try. And so my first play was, um, was Beauty and the Beast. Okay. And I was a freaking spoon, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was a spoon and a bookseller. And that's like my first lies ever. My first lies was, good morning, Belle. Like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started singing songs from there, but I, I felt I felt alive. I felt you, I felt like in. I could be myself. And I was like, okay, cool. Because when I'm in the marching band, I'm out on the field with my drums. I felt like I'm I'm playing in a fantasy world of music. Like I could I could be free in an environment where I can express myself through music, and I can see the reactions of people through my performances. So theater was another element of that where. The instrument is literally me. And it's like, okay, what else can I do with this? So fast forward, uh, I now get a lead role in this musical Hairspray. See WeJ Stubbs, boy, is smooth, cares, man, it has the voice. See. And then that's when the idea of who Trey G. Riley is started to change. People started to notice me a little bit more. I wasn't that skinny, big-headed dude in the, in the cafeteria all by himself, like, I started to get some interest, if that makes sense. Still had a lot of acting, but still made some sense, yeah, yeah. you know? So that's where that next step into acting came to play. And so from then on, I was like, yeah, this is my ultimate passion. Acting is my number one goal. And then you got into the military. Um, is that, what, which branch of the military did you get into? And what was, the, is that something that you, that you already had planned? Like, I'm going to join the military because so, of my upbringing? Is that something I want to do? Or what, what led you to that route? So to be honest with you, it was a little bit of both, right? Like I've always wanted to serve because of how my dad raised us and uh, I liked what he was doing. But I also felt like it was a deterrent away from my actual dreams. And it was those moments where like, well, you need something stable. Everybody needs a, com a comfort job. Just do that before you chase your dreams. And to me, my dad and I, especially my dad and I, we would constantly fight back and forth with that because that's what you did. I feel like I have what it takes to, to make it, you know? So no disrespect, of course, but either way, both my parents and uh, like my counsel advisors, like Miss Young, if she ever sees this, it's like, yo, joint ROTC, Reserves Officer Training Course. I had no idea what the hell that was. Uh, but once I got through it, at first I was like, this is, this is weird. I, I don't like this. I'm I'm dressing in uniform at college, but this is supposed to be my like my opportunity to explore who I am. You know, I don't need more. Well, I'm glad I did get the discipline, but yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on, man, I need to be free, no structure, you know. But uh, moving on with that topic, it's like joining the military has been the best decision I I I stuck with. So I joined the United States Air Force, commissioned as a second lieutenant, and became the first military officer at the school. 
to commission with a degree in acting. So oh, it was like it. the irony of all just sticking through the passion. So they had to change up my curriculum for me just so I can like stay on course. I just had to stay an extra year in school, unfortunately. But either way, it was like, okay, if I can do that while in school, then I should be able to do it in real life, right? There should be no problems, right? <laughs> like, no, no. <laughs> um, it was more of a balancing issue that I had to deal with for the six years. And I was also married at the time as well, bro. And just focusing on the military experience side only right now, it was difficult, but it opened so many opportunities of creativity for the video production because uh, the military, they have public affairs, but the way that I was bringing creativity to the units, to the organization, was a little bit different. So it was more like I get to express myself as a videographer, not necessarily as an actor, but I was still be able to balance both a day job and my videography side, if that's making sense so yeah. far. So ultimately, it, it ended up being like, as I progressed, I was being progressed in a leadership position where it's going to take more time out of my day to focus on, which means I had to sacrifice acting. I was, I was doing like small short films, maybe a commercial here and there. And it's like, in my heart, I was like, I'm missing out, man. I'm missing out. So I just, towards the, um, towards my six year mark when I became a captain, I learned more about the Air National Guard and decided to transfer there. So now I get to do that part time and now put more effort into my acting and video production full time. No, that's, that's, I'm glad that you mentioned how it was so beneficial to have something stable because it's hard to be a creative, especially in today's economy and in such competition on uh, everybody's trying to do something to maybe not competing with each other, but we're all competing for attention in, yeah. in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. This economy so, has been mad disrespectful, bro. It's, like, it's insane. The yeah. last two, three years. Um, but so many people, they don't find that good, stable rock to hold them through while they're pursuing their creative careers um a lot of times too is it is holding you back but you're making sacrifices for yourself you're like your future self is like i know maybe i want to be doing videos right now but it's like no like this is actually you're maturing you're learning and then when you actually continue and continue to have your stable job and then have your creative endeavor i feel like you're seeing both sides of the of the world, like the creative side, but also you're seeing like the physical military, like the rough life, like how humans more in a nature type of way, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that gives you a good perspective. It really did. And um, I will always, even till this day, I find myself a little bit of the balance of stability versus chasing the dream, right? So these eight months, leaving active duty and which has now been a year now to do a part-time military has been very tough and now it's more like i see why like you said having a stable job can help bring what you need to do in your creative world because it's like you just have to work even harder with what the time that you have it's just straight up like that and i i gotta hold myself accountable and say for those who are watching this like it's my fault that I decided to lose that staple stability for a dream because of the perception that I was seeing. I was seeing other people doing what I wanted to do every day with this, which was it seemed like, you know, but it's all planned. We don't know what those other people are doing behind the scenes. Some people are holding that in and some people are expressing it, but I was I chose to see the side of, well, they're doing this as a full-time career. I'm always he seeing and hearing the highlights. I can make this happen, you know? But I didn't prepare myself fully on that transition. Yeah. And because I was doing good on the East Coast, that don't mean I was going to be all good on the West Coast, you know? It's just like, damn, what can I do with this scenario? One, own up to it. I did it. Got to make it work. But now it's like, now I have more time to go all into the business. So this is why back in the day, when I told myself I still need to have the skills of videography because ironically, that has been fueling my pockets as my day-to-day -day job within the field that I love while not being able to do acting as much. 
So to your point of like having the stability, dude, I, I, I actually do recommend it. Keep that stability. Yeah, this sucks to be in that world right now, but what are you doing with that off time that you do have to leverage yourself, the credibility and the experience to want to do that full time? Someone told me a while ago, and I wish I did better at listening to that. I heard, but I didn't put enough action. It's like if you can invest into some, if you have the money to invest into it twice, then you should be able to live off with that opportunity. So it's like like a credit card. If you can swipe that with a credit card and you can pay that off twice, you're good. I didn't put myself in that scenario. And if I did, I did. It was only a short burst. Yeah. Just to get through it. Yeah. And then that is that how you ended up in the Coachella Valley? How do you end up in the Coachella Valley <laughs> once you moved out here? So my girl and I, we were uh, planning my transition to L.A. I said, nope, nope, nope. Tunnel vision. I want to go to L.A. I want to be an actor. All of that jazz. She's able to uh, get she uh, she's a physical therapist. And so coming out to Palm Springs is like where the, the money maker is for old people. Let's just call it what it is. You know, yeah, yeah. You, you need your joints straightened out. She got you. So her becoming the breadwinner now and me having to take a step back and figure this out. It was disappointing for me personally, but at least she was secure with the opportunity now. To keep it up front with what I initially wanted to do, bro, I wanted to come out to L.A. on my own. I didn't want her to come with me because she's she's been involved with the stable lifestyle. I'm so used to moving around. It's just like, bro, it's fine. I will live in my car for a couple months. Who cares? I'm good. Yeah. You know, to send a text. I'm good. Keep it moving. But I said, give me a year to figure this out. She took that as, okay, I need a year to get ready to go out there with you. That's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not what I said. But, but that's why we ended up being here. So it's like celebrating the small victories, right? Am I in LA? No, but I'm rather be two hours away than 3,000 miles. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy with that. You, know? you can still network with a lot of people in LA and then just make a trip out there, kind of plan out your day. A couple of days, like you said, just go for two days, just do this. Are you um, Are you still, or like how, how does, how do you even get in contact with like what roles are opening up or have you even tried applying for roles or is that like more of a future plan? So what's like your, when it comes to like acting? Oh, absolutely, bro. I am applying. I'm on casting networks. I'm on actors access. I'm in the DMs on Instagram. Just, so, just so, so that you just have to see, submit like, um, do they ask for the, like a demo reel and stuff? Like, I've, I've never seen yeah. that works. Yeah, no worries. So yeah, some some um, casting directors they do. Yes, they ask for your uh, casting reel or your uh, demo reel, and they also ask for your resume. So at least my resume was beefy enough to submit to, but. Also headshots as well. I needed to get new headshots. So I dropped like almost $2,000, bro, on new headshots. And those headshots better last me four years. Because yeah. it's melanin, <laughs> do not crack, all right? So, <laughs> but yes, that's what they typically do. And so during the off times when I'm either editing my footage or when I'm out driving or whatnot, I will go on those networks and I just apply, just apply. Like that right there alone has been my nine to five, really. Because that's the sole reason why I was here in the first place. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll get bites. Sometimes I don't. Most of the time, actually, I don't get anything. I've been getting more auditions, finally, but not necessarily enough yeses. And that's just me being real, because that's the part of the game, unfortunately. I finally passed the level of just submitting and not hearing anything. I'm getting submitted for the auditions to come through. But now it's like, okay, what can I do for them to say yes? What are they looking for? What am I not providing, if that makes sense? Oh, do they, do they ever give you feedback on? Not at all. Absolutely no. not. No. They just ghost you. Just yeah, it's just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just like, yeah. we'll talk to you. No. <laughs> <laughs> and at first, I would get annoyed. Like, in New York, I was doing some auditions and uh, got the guy's number and everything like that. I responded. I, I, I shot him a text. I said, hey, man. Um, it's obviously a no because it's been a while. Is there anything I could have done better? Like, what is there? Was it my look? Was it bad acting? Whatever. Nothing. Like, complete ghost. But we were talking just fine prior to it. So, 
at the end of the day, it's part of the business, bro. They ain't got time to just be looking at, pro- provide feedback because their goal is to fulfill a requirement for the director to they can ultimately produce money for the uh, for the yeah. project that they're on. Yeah, it's all it goes up the chain. The director and the marketing and the producers and yeah. The- and the people that write the checks, and it's just like we gotta do all these things. It's a big process, but yeah, no. Um, I like that you're doing your own practice and your own videos, like acting a lot of times with yourself. You know, you just yeah. I mean, they putting costumes on and mm-hmm. playing different roles in the video. Um, since when did you? Is that something that you wanted to do just to keep practicing for yourself? Since you like, you know, I need to just keep practicing, and or is that something that you saw like other people doing on social media, or how, how did that pop? Bro, that's a good question, man. It's a little bit of both, like. From my perspective, it's annoying when I hear that TikTokers are considered actors. What? Not the type of acting that I would consider, but that's just my opinion. I don't think TikTokers are actors. I just think they're just having fun being creative, which in turn can create money and have a financial gain. I'm not dissing the game at all. But because of that, it's like, okay, I need to adapt. I need to be flexible with something to make that work so I can be a part of the game in which I want to be the part of. It's just the way it is. So, yeah, I wanted to do more acting of myself. That way I can constantly work on my chops. No excuses, bro. Like, I, I've had the opportunity and the blessing to have this equipment whatever I want. So, like... <laughs> gotta use it yeah exactly bro like okay i can make my own film for myself you know now it would be great to have other people with me since i'm like i'm creating friendship with you guys so now it's like i can start moving away from just being just me and have other people around me but this taught me if i want to be the actor that people see on the camera i gotta look normal and natural with this so and then also too i gotta think about the data what numbers am i showing that shows either i'm funny attractive or, and or like you know a representation for entertainment like what what can i show so by putting myself out there out there and ironically doing comedy skits of my own i now have proof that people do see me as funny because at first i'm like bro i'm not funny at all like i'm more yeah. of like a motivational <laughs> inspirational type of guy like and it's like no let me try it out let me just take a risk and ironically, what I did was that was so goofy was one of my most viral videos out there, man. Like almost a million views, you know. So it's a blessing that something that I didn't think would be funny or speak very cringy, people are laughing and enjoying the experience. And I was just really being myself. And it gives you the reps too, because the more you're in front of a camera, maybe it's not in a Hollywood studio, but the 100 video and then 200 videos and the 300 videos, like it's just you're just way more natural because compared to when you first turned on that iPad back in college or whatever, mm-hmm. you're probably like all nervous to even speak to the, to the <laughs> iPad. And it's just like, it's just like everything else. You just got to get the reps in. And yeah. It keeps you also creating from the writing process to filming to fulfilling multiple roles. Like you're doing so many things that's just, it's just molding you into whatever direction comes in the next two, three years, you know, there or 10 years. Yes, bro. There is no limit to Trey G. Riley. And that would be the only time I speak in third person. Because <laughs> I do not want to be cocky like that. But uh, for real, like, like I said before, no excuses, bro. Like, I'm the type of person that likes to exhaust all resources before asking for help. Because asking for help has been difficult for me. Just straight up, bro. It's like the pride gets the best of me. Because I don't like the reactions that I see from people when I do ask for help. As an actor, I'm very observant to the movements of people's eyes, face, body language, all of that. Even mentally, like the psychology of the human mind, it, it fascinates me. So when I'm asking somebody for help and I get that look like, okay, or huh? I, what, what? It's like all of that right there, even though it's subtle for them, they just truly don't understand. To me, it just seems like you, you're not interested. Let me not waste your time. So... Uh, that's why I just do everything on my own. But even now I know as I get older, I just turn 30, that <laughs> I can't do everything on my own forever. Now, but that's, uh, how do you feel about age when it comes to, 
this aging yet. <laughs> oh, so when it comes to age, bro, I actually looking forward to it. I feel like I've been looking like a child most of my life, bro. <laughs> like I, I, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for that. I want that, bro. Like, come on, what are we doing here? You know, like, Jesus, I'm 30. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm ready for uh, the, the salt and pepper look. I'm ready for the wrinkles. I'm ready for it all, bro. I'm ready to be somebody's baby daddy. <laughs> Sugar daddy, if that makes sense. But no, um, yeah, I definitely don't want to be nobody's baby daddy. Mm -mm. But um, uh, yeah, I, I look forward to it because I think I've heard several men in their life. They said that as you get older, you start to reach more of your prime within your late 20s, early 30s. And to me, when I changed into my 30s, like the start of my 30s, I mentally... I felt like, okay, all the stuff that I was doing, some of it was straight bullshit. Like, think about it. Let's be more logical with what's going on here, man. I'm really not here to play these games, you know? There's a time and place for it. All those things are coming to my head now. And so now I'm at an age where it's like, okay, take a step back, assess, bro. Stop reacting emotionally to everything, man. Let's just keep it pushing. So the short answer to that, I'm looking forward to the age because... Now I'm more comfortable and thankful that there are still opportunities even as I get older. I was so afraid that if I didn't get into this active business young, I'll never make it. But if Samuel Jackson can do it, if all Don Cheeto can do it, I mean, so can I. I read this book by Brian Cranston, yeah, uh, Life in Parts, at like 2015 or so. And in the book, he said that he he's been acting for 20 years doing nothing but like some random commercial here and there maybe five minutes on a on a daytime tv show like a novel or a i don't know like a, what do you call those shows those those daytime shows yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like good morning america no no no. those shows start like soap operas my oh man. oh yeah, yeah yeah so brian cranston he was doing mm -hmm. like he would have like some side role five minutes on a soap opera for like 20 years and some random commercial here and there. And then he didn't find a role, which was Malcolm in the Middle, until I think in his late 40s, maybe 50s. And then 10 years later, he landed Breaking Bad. So he didn't reach his peak until like 60. Yeah. But he had been doing little, whatever he could get his hands on. Um, and I, I read that one. I was like, oh, damn. And like, we put pressure on ourselves. But it's society because we're seeing people doing it. It's, and it's the same thing you said earlier. It's like... We, we're on social media, too, so we see people that are, like, maybe more ahead of us or doing things that we or we aspire to be, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's like, there's no competition because every person has their own upbringing, their own circumstances, connections, and there's no time, like, there's no rules because everything is made up. So I always have this concept that everything is fake, mm -hmm. like, we don't need anything. And I, you probably know a lot from uh, the military. It's like, you know, when you're over there, all you need is, like, you have enough water, food, whatever you need to survive. Mm -hmm. you know, that's all you need, survival. And that's what humans need, it's survival. Yeah. And everything else is, it's a made-up industry. Yeah. Sports industry, music, movies, they're all made-up industries. And, of course, it's real. There's a passion and everything that goes along with it, but we don't need anything. And I realized all that during COVID because mm -hmm. everything just shut down and it was like just your core family values and survival, like big pause on life bro so then it's like, oh shit then it makes you think of like oh what's really important but it's also freeing uh, at least the way i see it is because we don't need anything then there's no rules you just have to play the game mm -hmm. find ways to get into the system and to get into that game and then squeeze the most out of it what you can yeah yeah it's, it's especially that bro i i will admit like there are moments where i'll be mad when i see someone younger of my uh of my looks get into the industry and make it well you like you said everybody has a different upbringing it's just like what is it that i'm doing wrong man i would get so frustrated but it's just like i have no idea what that person is going through in the background he may be excited but one thing i've learned so far on in this industry is there's a lot of people who are depressed and a lot of people who need who should uh look forward to asking for mental health there's nothing wrong with that and i feel like us as creators if we get more mental help, we'll be so much better and be able to dominate this industry in a more logical way because we're emotionally damaged by the culture in which we're trying to get stuff into. Now, like you said, every it's a game. 
like we we can control it like what exactly. is going on like this if like inflation delete like oh we have trillions of dollars of debt with china no we don't you know like <laughs> come on some like, made up numbers bro. Yeah, yeah yeah it's like these policies they cannot change like what's wrong with taking the pdf online hitting the backspace button a few times and the type of things that relate to this generation of society you know um so i definitely agree with what you're going through man or, and what you're expressing it's just simply the fact of like hey no matter what we choose to get ourselves involved with let's make the best of it learn the rules of the game but be able to evolve in a way that benefits us first yeah i i started looking at that too it's just don't put pressure on yourself and it's like the mental the mental health aspect of it sometimes is just like i've gone through this so many times too <laughs> with my own content like I'm, I'm, why am i even making content or like should I be doing something else? Like, am I wasting my time? Yeah. Like, I go through those cycles all the time, just highs and lows, you know? But you just got to keep going. Then you take a step back and realize, oh, no, this is part of the game. Like, it's not all going to be perfect, you know? You're going to have setbacks. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you also got to be real with yourself that maybe you're just not it for it. Or at least not right now. I'm not saying I'm the handsome gentleman in the world, but when I get that beard, it's going to be a different game. <laughs> but, you know, but until then... <laughs> I may not be ready for for or be ready for the eyes to be seen for me. And that's fine. But at least I have the passion to drive to capture those who deserve it. And and to me that still brings me happiness to say that I may not be the one in front of the camera, but I help take her smile or his smile to be shown by millions of people. And that makes me so happy. Yeah, it's it's the digital times now, you know? Yeah, And uh, either whether you're a business or you're trying to create something creative or something that you want to do, it's like everybody exists on the phone now, which is pretty crazy that we're all just a, like as a species, old people, young people, everyone's addicted to the phone 24-7. Yeah, yeah. And it goes back to what you said too. Like we we grew up with the evolution of it all. Like, yeah. I remember, bro, when I had my first phone, it was from Boost Mobile. Man, I thought that phone was the shit, bro. Like, <laughs> it was one of those phones. It's called the Incognito. Yeah, it was called the Incognito. And it was like a mirror. It was a flip phone mirror. And it was just like, okay, I can see myself. But hold on. I actually see somebody trying to shoot me the DM. Okay. It didn't go from there until I ran out of minutes. But yeah, it's like. <laughs> you had run out of texts. Yeah. 100 texts a month. <laughs> bro, now we're at a point where we don't even think about that, man. Like, it's Hell crazy. Yeah, it's just the data like oh i can't use data i can't like watch the, i can't i can't listen to the one song or the phones that first started getting the internet like those blackberries yeah i remember a friend in high school he had a blackberry and then he would go on the thing he would like type in like www <laughs> whatever it yeah. would take like 10 minutes to load but eventually you'll, you'll get a website you're like what the fuck yeah um the chocolates that you remember the chocolate phones yeah. for samsung that for, they were like mp3 players yeah so you could put music in them and then you actually physically had to put music that you downloaded on your computer. Downloaded. So you downloaded. Yeah. And you paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And yes. then. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not, it was uh, it. every song you downloaded was Soldier Boy, Crank That. Yeah, like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that hacked the, the whole system. Watch me crank that Batman. That was my favorite one. Wow, 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 watch me, bro. Watch me crank that Wait, Batman. What year, what year did that come out? Like 2007 or some shit? Don't make me feel old, bro. Don't make <laughs> <laughs> nah, but. Yeah. Oh, did you. Um, Motorola Razor. That was the a Razor. Phone. Yeah, yeah, the, the Razor the was. They actually brought it back out again, too. Oh, they did? Yeah, oh, all touchscreen. Now it looks ugly. Yeah. It, I remember, um, man, I had like a Samsung moment, like a moment or something shit like that. You had a moment in time? A moment with Samsung. <laughs> and uh, I remember the keyboard. It was like you flip it sideways, but it would just reveal a keyboard. So you would just be typing on the keyboard. Nice. And then everything just became digital with the iPhone. And then mm. just had an iPhone ever since. Yeah, bro. I remember I want to be part of the iPhone crew so bad that I had an Android HTC. And at the time, it was during college, that was the closest thing that looked like an iPhone. Bro, I was so, I was so uh, iPhone, like, what do you call them? Groupie? Yeah. That I would even download apps to where the user interface looked like an iPhone. That's how bad I wanted it. It was like, oh, it was so cringy. Even me saying that now, like, oh, my God, bro. You still like, had that green text, though. Fuck. Yeah, right, right. No wonder why they didn't hit me back. 
<laughs> that's why the producers are in your back, bro. Nah, that's why you're them girls back in the day they didn't with make the me sad, song. bro. <laughs> All them, bro, them girls will get on iPhone quick. Like it was just a, it was a mass exodus of people leaving Android. Or even the iPod generation, like just listening to music on the iPod. That show was super cool, bro. I thought the iPod Nano Touch, I thought that was the. Which is which is crazy. The colorful it's, ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not even that, but it was like a very small like the iPod. squares. Yeah yeah, 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 bro. I actually have a photo. I don't know if I can find. It, I can send it to you. I have a photo where I took the iPod Nano and made it a watch. And ironically, now we have watches that, that are the size yeah, of the Nano. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit. That's yeah, crazy. it was just like cause it was it was touch screen everything. I could just only like do music and like do my uh like workouts on it and. That was pretty much it. But now it's like, now I can answer phone calls. I'm not going to do it now, but like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the technology it just keeps evolving. Now we have all the artificial intelligence. How do you feel about it? Do you get scared of the progression? Do you see the new update by ChatGPT? Oh, it's scary, bro. Oh, my God. With Scarlett that... Johansson, they used her voice. Oh, shit. And um, I think she's suing uh, Sam Friedman, is his name or whatever, the guy from ChatGPT. So mm -hmm. they uploaded, I guess they reached out to Scarlett Johansson saying if they could use her voice. I don't know if for final or for the trial so they could like display it. Yeah. And she declined, but this was, they used a voice that was very similar, but it sounds almost like her. Like, well, you know, women like her, man. They sometimes sound <laughs> like, man. <laughs> so um, yeah. he did this test and then it translates in real time. So they use an example where like, um, the guy's like, oh, um, I'm standing here in the room. My friend only speaks Italian. I only speak English. Can, when you hear Italian, can you translate it to English? And when you hear English, can you translate it to Italian? Wow. And then literally they had a conversation. And then, like, I would say something, boom. And then mm -hmm. we'll repeat it back in Italian. And then she would reply in Italian, repeat it back in English. Like, in real time. Oh, without my typing, God. Like, just talking. Dude, that's insane, and dude. That's, that's version now. Like, version in two years, version mm -hmm. in five years. Ooh. It's going to be, and then this is going to be connected to our voice, um, like Siri or Alexa. Yeah. You'll be able to talk to them almost like a real assistant. Like with So Siri is going to be useful? Yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> it only took them 15 years. But uh, yeah, they, I think Apple is trying to partner up with the ChatGPT or some shit like that I read. But they're mm -hmm. trying to merge it and that way you have access to a virtual assistant, basically like Jarvis, like an Iron Man, you're wearing the necklace. Like, yeah, that, that world is like basically here. And then if you put on those Apple goggles, you're mm. literally like Iron Man pulling <laughs> fucking articles. And it's, it's like, oh, pull up this real quick. Yeah, dude, it's going to be insane. Have you tried those goggles? No, no, no. Mm. I, I don't want to uh, put myself in more debt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with that. No, um, I haven't tried them either. Yeah, but I mean, they seem interesting. Like, I mean, I feel like they'll be great for editing, though. Oh my god! Yeah. I could be laying down in bed, so my neck won't be strained. Like, yeah, you your fingers this? don't get carpal tunnel. Yeah. Shit. Oh my, bro, this this finger pause. Um, like, <laughs> 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 this finger is used for other things. But yeah, it's just like, yeah, man, it's, it's just enough stress. Click on that mouse every single time, man. Especially when people ask for more edits. Yeah. Take the first edit. <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, but uh, the Apple the Apple goggles, I. I will wait a couple of iterations for that because to me it seems bulky for the time that we're in right now. Think about it, Sony VR, other of these headsets, they're a lot smaller with these advanced capabilities and a lot cheaper too. Now, yeah. obviously you're paying for the value of it all, but I will wait for a different iteration for it because they recently let released the iPad, which is considered one of their thinnest iPads available. Right. Um, so if they're able to bring that and yet still have a bigger battery pack in the system too, I'm sure that they can. Yeah, it's only, it's only it. gonna get smaller, lighter, yeah. and better over the time. It's mm -hmm. like the Quest Two. The Quest Two is lighter and it could do a lot of the same features. So at least that's what Mark Zuckerberg. He came out <laughs> and made a video right away, like when they Apple dropped that. He's like, "Oh, I was trying it," <laughs> on his like non fucking emotion voice. Yeah, and um, he said that, "Oh yeah, I, I mean, I like the design, this and that, but it does cost like ten times or I don't know how many times more than his product." Mm -hmm. He's like, "But ours is faster, lighter. It could do pretty much everything it does." Blah, blah blah. Nice. But so he basically was saying that his product is better user friendly and everything. So and then the people are saying it's too heavy. Mm. Like it's really heavy having all that shit on your face. Like it gets tiring after like thirty minutes. Um but yeah, that's version one. So the ultimate is gonna get smaller, then it's gonna be like like sunglasses. 
then it's gonna be context. That's that will oh. be the that will be the five ten year fucking. Woo! Eventually, it's gonna be. And now you have like yeah that's yeah a little crazy but. that's that's gonna cause a lot of cheating scandals in schools <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And, like, and uh, the final phase is Skynet, and then we all just AI just takes over the world, and then we can't do shit. My thing is, man, AI has always been around, man. Always have. It's just like now it's a, I, people say that a bunch of times. It's the new buzzword of the year. You know what else is going to be new or different from it than what's going on right now? Like you said, you. The next five, ten years, it's going to be monumental for sure. But it doesn't negate what was already done five to ten years in the past. You know, so the evolution of AI, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I still want to keep my roots as far as like manual, physical labor of knowledge, if that makes sense. So let me physically read a book. Let me actively have communication with someone. Let me actively learn the language that that be fed to me because... As someone who enjoys tech, I definitely do feel numb at times having everything being done for me. Where it's like, oh, shoot, I'm about to forget how to write in cursive, you know? Oh, that's true. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, nah, I got, I got to write these receipts or agreements in a way that benefits people, you know? And also, you have to stay grounded to reality, you know? Because it's, I don't think we'll go through it because we grew up without the technology, but, you know, your grandchildren, my just grow up in that technology, just mm-hmm. integrated. But I feel like humans still want to connect with humans on a on a real physical level. You know, like you want to see people in person. Uh, which now I, I know a lot of the generation that grew up during COVID, during the 2020, 2021, 22, where they didn't really have high school. Some people skip. There's there's kids that went from elementary school straight to high school. Mm-hmm. Boom. They, they missed all their middle school years just straight wow. out of high school. Like, That's with sad. Just the anxiety and, like, all that shit. There's kids that they didn't go to, they only went to high school, like, freshman year, and then, boom, college. Like, they missed all their high school mm-hmm. growth and the relationships you build. And it just, it messed up a whole generation. So, we just still don't even know the effects of that disconnect. Yeah. Keeping everyone away from the classroom. So, um, I feel like it's important to be part of clubs, to be part of theater, part of sports. Yeah. Something that gets you connected with humans. Like, mm-hmm. You can't just be behind the glass the whole time. You know? Yeah, that physical touch or this one-on-ones that we have here, just it's just a human nature thing to have. I totally agree with that, bro. Oh, what was I about to say? Um, speaking of uh, like t- technology and stuff like that, do you have kids? No. So how many kids would you want? I always say at least four. Okay. So do you see yourself buying four iPads for your kids and having them being glued to the way that we see? No, yeah. hell yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Why? I think that's dumb. Like, it's just parents who didn't want to parent, you know? You just, oh, mm-hmm. here's an iPad. Stop crying. But um, I actually saw a video recently. It was, I think, on, it was like a hook or something. It's like, oh, this parent did an experiment to see how your attention affects your kids. So mm-hmm. it was like a one-year-old, like the dad would come home and then he'd sit on the couch and, he, and he'll like put his hands up. Mm-hmm. So then the kid would come out happy and then he'll hug, the kid want to get picked up by the dad. And then he'd do the same thing and then he sat on the couch but he was on his phone. And then the kid ran up to the dad and then he was kind of like curious and then he was looking at the phone and then the kid takes the phone and walks away from the dad. Like, oh, oh. let me see the device. Yeah. Then there was another one where the dad picks up the kid and he's like interacting with them while they're walking or maybe I don't know with what. And then there's another one where he has a kid but he's on his phone scrolling and the kid's just right here like all like sad. And the other one he's like smiling because uh, he's yeah. not like giving him that attention, you know, so he's giving it to the screen. Or the kid wants to see what, what the dad is looking at the screen because it's bright. Yeah. So it's like, oh shit, like these things are, we're affecting by just giving them devices. So I don't, I don't Eliminate know. temporary issues for long-term relationships that you could have had with your kids. Mm-hmm. That's the way I'm seeing it. And I, I align with you on that part as well because I definitely don't want to do that. I can see why my parents didn't want to give me the first generation iPhone. They probably saw it coming before we did. But yeah, it's just like you you eliminate communication. This is why people nowadays, like you said, have so many issues as far as like not expressing, expressing themselves. Like I've been on relationships where <laughs> they didn't want to answer the phone. They will express everything through text message. Now, I don't know if it's the technology or how people are raised. That, that's up to determination of the, the person I'm involved with. But 
it just seems like people don't know how to express how they really feel because they're afraid of the, the uh, response or they just haven't had that much interaction in the community to say your feelings matter and it is okay to express them. Yeah, even if we disagree, like, we need to talk, you know? Right. Yeah, and it's, yeah, I don't know the giving three, four iPads to kids technique. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely, I wouldn't want to do that. And um, I, I grew up playing football, so okay. I think uh, probably not football. I wouldn't have them play football, but sports. Just really? because some of Why not football? Nah, it's too dangerous. Like, you talk about it's not dangerous, yet you went through it all, bro. I mean, I did go through it all, and that actually gave me a lot of um, like work ethic and just keep going. A lot of factors, but yeah, I mean, I like the whole building relationships and community through it. Like, I got to meet people from all over. Just um, when I played at the college here, like everyone that played on the team, like eighty percent of the team was out of state, out of town. Yeah, like D one athletes that didn't have the grades to go D one or. They got in trouble in high school and they couldn't go to the colleges. They this is like their second chance. So it was like we had like eleven D one players on the roster <laughs> that and they were going the next year and like yeah. two NFL players and shit and people from Alaska, Indiana, Florida, Damn. New Orleans, here in the desert, real Alaska. Yeah. What the fuck? So building those relationships and going through those practices, like th that's super cool. And it's like it was no technology, it was literally just fucking running, practicing, playing games, you know. In the hot ass out. heat the gym and all that shit so i was like mm -hmm. i want my kids to experience even if it's not football maybe it's a theater maybe it's a film class maybe it's mm -hmm. marching band something they have to be part of something yes and i'll uh. support you know whatever they want to do but they can't just be at home playing video games or they could play video games at home that's fine too but they have to do their their other stuff i'm about to say man because nowadays that money maker is in the video games too now or, Start them young. Or fuck it, just have them learn fucking, here, here's an iPad, fucking be a badass <laughs> gamer kid. <now. laughs> Exploit them. Just <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, I'll be happy if my son became, or daughter become like a professional video gamer. It's just like, you know what, son? You played the games as long as you want. Matter of fact, I will join you. I will play <laughs> with you. I will look at my dad. I'll be like, see that? Shit, let me play my game, bro. No, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you nah. could be the manager just fucking, boom. Absolutely. But then it's just like, man, I don't want, as long as my, my kid loves to do it, that's yeah. fine. You know what I'm saying? And then take whatever money that he receives, put it all in the savings. So when he's done, it's like, yo, this is what you built. Like, I, I wouldn't want to take his money like that because he's earning. It's like, yeah, I could easily have done it because I'll be his father. But it's like, nah, I would have loved to have done something as a kid when my parents would. And I left. It's like, yo, you didn't realize this, but this was all based on what you did. Growing up, you know, maybe if I learned how to do proper layups on basketball, I probably would have <laughs> <laughs> been better at that. But yeah, and it's uh, I don't know, we we don't know what the future holds, but at least um, gotta be optimistic and just take your chances. Bro, the future is scary, bro. It's scary. It's I think it's exciting. What? I mean, yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by future like it's just like man our, our society is becoming so sensitive nowadays yeah it's just like cancel culture is more real than ever before everybody has an opinion which is fine now, i feel agree. like cancel culture is dying out really yeah i feel like people don't care anymore like i think we're going back to being more or less sensitive now because huh all these people that got canceled, they didn't really get canceled. Like, they get canceled, but mm -hmm. I think it just makes them more famous. It's just uh, publicity. That's fair. So, Alex Jones, for example, got canceled. He's still, he's still back. He That's came fair. back. It took him, like, two, three years. He's still, people still talk about him. His show's still good. You have uh, Kanye, who freaking went after everybody, got canceled, got dropped from all this, comes back, drops the number one album. Um... They're just countless examples. And yeah, maybe mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that Kanye alienated. They'll never listen to his stuff and blah, blah, blah. But every time he does anything, he goes back and he had like one of the most successful Super Bowl commercials, dropped a new album, did all these listening parties, yeah, charging yeah, yeah. and selling out stadiums without even picking up a microphone. Like, that's fair. That's yeah. maybe uh, half of the people listening are hating on it, but they're listening to it. You know? Okay. What well, do you think that? Our generation and the generations after us, do you think 
we are what it takes to make accurate legalized changes to the country of the United States. And what I mean by that is like, like the rules in, in place that have been stuck since the 1700s, congressional approvals, things of that nature. Do you think we will be that generation that can finally get into the season and be like, man, this shit was trash. Let's fix it. I feel like, yeah, I think it's going to take maybe another like 15, 20 years, like when we're a little older, but it's because is the shit was written by people <laughs> that were freaking wearing wigs. Is what I mean. It's like, I mean, it, yes. it's, it's been some great rules. Some it's the constitution. Everything's great, but that's a, it needs to be updated for a population that's 10, 15 times bigger than when the papers were written. You know, it's like we have yeah. such a diverse, just country, the, the amount of money, the different cultures, there needs to be something that's, not as, I don't know, the system just doesn't make sense for the way that everything's been growing. And also the people in power, everyone's like 60, 70, 80 years old right now. They don't, they're not even listening to the people who are at the bottom right now. The 20-something-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds are struggling with inflation. They don't see the inflation because, again, it's just numbers to them. And they're not looking at long term. But I feel like the young leaders that we have, the people that are starting these, like, just movements. Mm -hmm. It's like people in their 20s, 30s, and they're slowly getting into Congress and slowly getting there, but it's going to take another like 10, 15. So older people are going to be passing away. That's fair. Yeah. And then the next wave, I feel like we'll see some change in our lifetime for sure. I just don't know how long. Ah, it completely I get that. I really do. But yeah, we're, we're due for a revolution. I mean, I don't want to say it. We're going to reenact Le Miserable right here. <laughs> Do you hear the people sing? Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> nah, um, I'm never, I was never into theater, but I, I love plays. Yeah. Like, I love musicals and, like, watching movies and musicals. I don't go to the actual theater as mm -hmm. much, like, the to watch plays and shit. There's, they have some stuff in L.A., but... Yeah. Um, I've seen... I've seen Wicked, mm -hmm. and I've seen... You've seen Hamilton? I've never seen Hamilton. I've seen Hamilton on Disney... Plus? Like, yeah, Disney Plus. Okay, okay, okay. I've seen it like three times, and I fucking love it. So yes, sad. bro. Bro, I have the soundtrack fire, on bro. repeat, bro. Fire. Repeat. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. The freaking <laughs> satisfy the song. So like fire. Or like, do you see on when they did the reverse? Mm -hmm. The re they did like the whole scene, and then they rewinded, rewind, and then like all the actors started like acting backwards. Really, I didn't see you that one. This? Yeah, bro. It's it. The choreography of that shit is insane because the stage is moving. Mm -hmm. They're like rewinding and then they go back to like a pre like a flashback in yeah. the middle of the play and you're like, what the fuck? Like I was blown away. So I, I wanna see Hamilton in person, but I've seen it on Disney Plus for sure. Well done. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so what do you think? Uh you think we were due for a big change? Absolutely. Yeah, it's been long overdue. And I think this is generation is gonna be like, hey, we're tired of it. We're fed up. We need to make a change moving forward. I don't know how we're going to do it. Um, it's going to burn a lot of bridges. Um, I can see that happening. But in order for us to evolve in a society out here, we, we can't be doing the same thing again. It's going to take an alien invasion, bro. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> we're so divided. <laughs> like, the whole country's so divided. But it's like, I feel like, I don't know. Is the whole, I feel like in person, people are more chill and like more together. But on social media, it feels like it's just two completely different sides are just fighting each other. So oh, yeah. I don't know if it's like that. In, or maybe because I'm here in California, I just see, because I see people from both sides. And I don't know, I feel like I talk to a lot of people, and people are more neutral, more, we just want to have a better life. You know, we don't really. They should be dedicated to their side, but I feel like most people are just in the same. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that because they're now behind a phone. Like they're they're behind something that they don't have to worry about. You know those internet bullies? Like yeah. the reason why we feel that such a divide because like you said, you and I in front of each other, it's like, okay, we can have a conversation. I don't feel a need to do anything stupid towards you, and I don't think you feel that way towards me either. But you say something stupid online, and it's just like <laughs> I could say some slick shit, keep it moving. We'll never have to interact with you There's again. No, uh, then the repercussions. Gonna no. It's a random profile. Yeah, yeah. It's just like that's that's the word, the way that we live in right now, or the world that we live in, I should say. Um, I think it's, it takes one giant EMP 
to just slam the world real quick, give it a few days and realize, okay, we were so caught into this uh, matrix that people were talking about. We need to get out of it. Yeah, we're we're so vulnerable as a society. Like, just something something hits, EMP just take off the grid, and it's over, bro. Like, you know, I never thought I'd ask it here or anywhere at all, but I've always wanted to ask this question: Who do you think is in charge of society? So I know I, I think about this shit all the time. Like, who the hell? Because there's levels. So I feel like so there's. There's like the countries, but then there's people above the countries. It's like the people that that own the companies. So the companies that they mentioned, like BlackRock and all these, they're they own a lot of the stocks. They own the companies that build the weapons to destroy countries. Mm-hmm. But they also own the companies that go into the countries and rebuild those countries afterwards. Yeah. So they're making money on the bombs and they're making money on the reconstruction of those places. So there's people on top of that, but then who's on the board of those people? Then in the United States, I think there's like 12. I'm, I'm just shit I've heard. Right. I'm not sure, but I heard there's because uh, a bunch of banks started getting bought out by bigger banks. I think there's right now there's like 12, could be 12, could be 15 banks left in the United States. So imagine the 12 presidents or CEOs that have meetings, the 12 people who control all the money. But then who's on top of them? Who's that boss? So the right. 12 people who control all the money. Then it's like, oh, shit. They have these people at the top. And then. Also look at like Putin because mm-hmm. that, that's they have a whole different system and that's why they we've been fighting the, their system for forever you know mm-hmm. whatever you want to call these wars is because the people that control us they're fighting with they've been fighting with them and now China has their own system over here so I don't know if it's like the president of China Putin whoever's on top of the United States mm-hmm. um, and then the Saudis they have their own top people yeah so i feel like those are the top people of the world but i don't know there's even people above them so that's i mean i don't it's, know it's scary bro the but thing. i feel like the way i see it is like that like those are the big powers is like yeah putin uh elon musk said that like he said people think i'm the richest man in the world but i don't have an army to invade ukraine i don't have an army to go take another country putin is more powerful than me because he has the army to go take that country right now. So it's like, That's oh, shit, fair. when you look at it like that. Yeah. So net worth, all this doesn't mean anything if you don't have the military. Yeah. So the U.S. is the strongest military in the world. You have China, you have Russia. So you got to go where the power is at. So that's but who's, like, controlling those three entities, yeah. you know? Exactly. No one knows. But from my perspective, as far as, like, we all have a say in society. Like, society... Uh, who's in charge of it? We are. It's as simple as that, man. Like, nah, we can determine whether what if if our curfew is at ten o'clock or at midnight. We determine if these jobs are gonna be minimum wage seventeen dollars or it's gonna be thirty dollars. We can determine that. And once I feel like we are in that mindset, like, well, society is changing and evolving because we need to. We need to. I'm, we're, we're bored of this. Next channel, you know? Yeah. So, like, no matter what we all go through in life, it's like we all have a representation of what we can do within this world, within this society. So, you're right. Who is controlling those other elements? We may never know. And maybe they have been ordained in a way where they have they chosen this responsibility to do so. Like, okay, we know we could trust this man or this woman to lead the entirety of this organization. But I also feel like there are contingencies in place. If someone has to abuse of a power, people below them can say, no, 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 bring your tail down here. Because I've always felt like the president was the most powerful person in the U.S. No, it's Congress. Congress can really make, is the one that's really good decision. Yeah. We just need his signature so he can take the responsibility if something yeah. were to go wrong. They just have a, yeah, the guy's riding the, the ship. But you have, um, so someone said that to the United States is the biggest government in the world, is the biggest business in the world. So the government has the most employees. If you look at the government's business, the most employees, the most money, the, the biggest infrastructure, they own all the land, they own all these parks, they own 
the biggest navy. I don't know. It's just like it's just a business. Yeah. So, yeah. The, I mean, the U.S. I think we're. I mean, when you were saying that we have the power, at, at least here in the U.S., we do have. But in other countries, you know, you're more restricted. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do. I, I, I like your point of it too. The we all have our own power, and these people can't govern without the people. Yeah. The people have the power. But yeah, we do. And it's like, yeah, all the countries have their way of governing their countries. Like, why do we need to fight that? I mean, if there's things that we don't like, if it's a human nature issue, which I know certain countries have just human rights disrespect, then, then that I, I see it as a reason to fight. But if that's what they want to do and it's not part of the U.S., they should be able to do that. That's that's. Why are we digging our nose in so much shit? You know? Maybe it's because they really want to do... They just want more power. Like, there's no limits, you know? It's like, we have yeah. this powerful thing, but it's like, we still want that over there, you know? We want to control more. It's just about control. Whether it was back in the day when it was, like, a small, tiny... bit, It, was, it used to be just small tribes within a region. Mm-hmm. And then some fucking crazy motherfucker would take over four or five tribes. And now, like, Genghis Khan... Um, they started as tribes. He started doing, killing all the neighboring tribes, taking the children as like soldiers or killing pr- pretty much 90% and the remaining just join your army out of fear. Then, you, then you're just conquering tribe by tribe and eventually cities and eventually countries that controlled like 25% of the world at one point. Right. Barely on horseback, just raiding and destroying <laughs> villages as they went for like 100 years. So yeah, the, the cons and all the shit. So the Mongols. I feel like that doesn't go away the bigger you get. So it's like That's you, fair. now they have this control, this control, but they still want more control and they want more control and they want more power. And by I don't having, know why, but Yeah, and by having more power, you are now having other countries be more defensive, more defensive. And now it's like, okay, well, we don't want you taking this, so now I inadvertently create all these wars. And I get it, like we don't want we shouldn't interfere with what other people are doing, but we can't just be relaxed either. We're all human. We all have that triggering moment. So Because there's still tribes, bro. It's like, yeah. oh, fuck, if we don't defend, if we're not ready for the worst case scenario, the big ass tribe on the other side of the ocean could attack us and shit. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. that's dope. But then also, I feel like that's all manipulation to keep, because humans are motivated by fear. Mm-hmm. So I feel like part of me also, in, in my conspiracy head is like all these fake wars or like the tensions between China and Russia and the U.S. Sometimes I feel like they do it on purpose just to keep everybody on edge. The Russian people on edge, our people on edge. And we're, we always have that fear of like, oh, our big enemy might nuke us one day or throw an EMP. But then it keeps the population like docile because they're a little bit scared. Yeah. I, nah, I get you. I get you on that, bro. So, oh, yeah. I had another thought yesterday or What's earlier up? today. Now you fucking make <laughs> and the juice is fun. So there's um, you know how in marketing or branding, you can make people have an emotion. Yeah. So you could create a story, um, like the movie Up, where like in the first three minutes, you know, you have the guy's life with no words or whatever, and just like you so beautiful, it. bro. Things so. like that. Movies, TV shows, music, they have us have different emotions. We connect with the visuals, the things we're seeing, they're, they're filmed in a way for, for, to give us a certain emotion. Then it's like, I know for sure they're doing big experiments on people, whether it's like um, government experiments so they know, they know how, if they create some kind of propaganda, they know how these people are going to react. Mm-hmm. You know, when the government of Texas, they say these outlandish things or they're trying to ban certain books, you know that is going to trigger 20 million people to react to that new law and shit. And you see articles and people are outraged and people are protesting. Then it's like, are they doing that at a giant scale? And are we part of a matrix? Like, are they having a a way better version of chat GPT? (laughs) Oh, if we make this whole population, if we start doing these kind of policies, the people are going to react this way. And then we could do this program to, because we know they're going to react this way. Like, are we getting played at, at such a scale in the billions of people? From the people huh. at the top, are they saying, like, oh, it's time to shake some shit up, or it's time to do this. Like, you know, we need to do this. Like, I don't know. I mean, I would, I would believe so, in a way, because there's even science to the study of color. Like, even to that level, 
on how you can pull the strings on people's emotions. So I wouldn't be surprised if they have the top leading experts in all those fields, psychology, uh, science, any of those natures, pulling together on creating the most devious lick in the nation on how we can manipulate our, our way of life. Because who knows this, what we're going through right now, this recession could be an example of what they're going through and say, if we raise the price, they can feel so bad. They will force themselves to save more money, force themselves to be normalized in this way. And now we've raised the price on these products when they never should have been raised to begin with. We've gotten more money in our pocket for the same value. And it's just like, like you said, putting the stress on the human nature. And it's just data to them, you know. They don't care about the individuals. It's just they data. They do not care about my son in the back <laughs> corner wanting some bread and milk. Damn. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, some tough. I like, uh, I like to think about that sometimes. But then it's like you can't control some stuff. You mm-hmm. can only control what you want to do and control and make the things you want to do. So play the game you know you're preaching you're preaching right there control you can't control lord have mercy <laughs> we can get we can get a lot of things done if people can follow that at least yeah not for sure but um i don't want to take uh, more of your time you Riley. but now nah, it's a good conversation bro uh what's uh where can people find your social media if people want to connect with you what's yeah you absolutely man you can connect me connect with me on instagram facebook tiktok all it's going to be the same name trey g Riley. T R E Y underscore G underscore Riley R I L E Y. Yeah, bro. Real G right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. So well, good. thank you for for joining me. I think we can definitely have you doing more of this shit. Oh yeah, bro. This is fun. This I love this. Yeah, podcast is sick. So make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Later.